Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today, Nvidia's next gen gets delayed, Ryzen 5000 desktop APUs, RX 6800 XT gets half the ray tracing performance in Vulkan, Intel's 11900 is actually impressive, and AMD's upcoming mobile chip beats Intel's 10900K? Okay, it's news time and first up for today we have some bad news on Nvidia's next gen GPUs. In a recent tweet from resident leaker copite 7 Kimmy, he claims that the company's upcoming multi-chip module based design called Hopper has been delayed. For those who don't know, multi-chip modules are thought to be the future of GPUs and are essentially how AMD's Ryzen gets so much performance at such a great price. They essentially combine multiple modules to make their processors. This allows for cheaper production as the bigger a chip is, the lower its yield rate is due to a higher chance of failure. Nvidia saw this as the future a while back and it was thought that Hopper would be the architecture to get us there. Well, apparently things aren't going all that well, and we've already seen a new hint on the name being Ada Lovelace, thanks to her name appearing on Nvidia's Company of Heroes t-shirt. Either way, let's hope Hopper doesn't become the next Cannon Lake. Or really, I'd just take any GPU in stock. Of course, when GPUs do come back in stock, get the best prices with today's sponsor, Micro Center, the first place I bought components for my first build, so I personally recommend them. Not only that, but they have 25 actual brick and mortar locations across the United States. And it's basically a paradise for tech lovers. Plus they have a great custom PC builder so you know you're getting the right parts. And you can have an expert assemble it for you the same day. Oh, and did I say best prices? Because Micro Center consistently has some of the best prices in the industry. And for a limited time, when you visit my link in the description, you'll get a free 32 gigabyte flash drive and 32 gigabyte micro SD card with no purchase necessary. So check that out below. Next up for today, AMD isn't done with the Ryzen 5000 series, as we have four new processors set to be released by the company. The first two were shared in a tweet by resident leaker Momomo underscore US. As you can see, it's the Ryzen 7 5800 non-X variant and Ryzen 9 5900 non-X variant. These are the 65 watt models and while we don't know the clocks, they will obviously be lower than the X variants, but will likely come in a bit cheaper. The good news is that you can typically overclock AMD's non-X variants to right around the same as their X counterpart, so it's usually a great deal to go with the non-X variants. Of course, that's if they ever get back in stock. Either way, the other two variants come from Patrick Schur, who's certainly proven himself to be very accurate in the past. In his new tweet, he simply mentions two Cezanne, so Zen 3 based APUs, and they are the Ryzen 5 5600G and Ryzen 7 5700G. Now, the G moniker is for AMD's desktop APUs, and according to the names, these should be a 6 and 8 core CPU respectively. The real question is whether they'll be restricted to OEM only parts like we saw with Ryzen 4000G, and unfortunately, Patrick sure doesn't know, but here's to hoping they'll be available to everyone. Next up, the open consortium that makes the Vulkan API just released full support for real-time ray tracing on both Nvidia and AMD cards in Vulkan. So far, there's really only one game that supports it, and that's Quake 2 RTX. Luckily, PC Gamer was able to test both Nvidia's RTX 3080 and AMD's RX 6800 XT in the game, and as you can see, it isn't looking great for AMD. Their RX 6800 XT got nearly half the performance when compared to Nvidia's RTX 3080. Of course, there are a couple caveats. For one, Nvidia played a huge role in bringing the support to Vulkan. With that said, whether the support helps Nvidia's cards over AMD's is tough to say, but it's good to keep that in mind. You could also argue that games so far are very much optimized for Nvidia cards, so AMD's cards could get much better as time goes on. Still, this is the public release, and as of now, Nvidia's RTX 3000 series simply demolishes AMD when it comes to ray tracing support. We'll have to see if that improves in time, as well as what AMD has planned for their DLSS competitor. So as always, time will tell. Next up for today, Intel's upcoming 11th gen CPUs are looking quite a bit more impressive than we originally thought. The story comes from a couple new benchmarks leaked by Raichu and HXL on Twitter. As you can see, HXL shows us that it's Intel's upcoming 8-core 11900 non-K model. 
Raichu doesn't seem to disclose the GPU, but it's believed to be the same, but it has a boost that's 100 MHz higher. So yeah, this isn't the fastest Rocket Lake part. Not only that, but they're clearly an early engineering sample as the faster of the two only has a boost clock of 4.5 GHz. But here's the big thing. The CPU, while clocked at only 4.5 GHz, literally beats Intel's 10900K at 5.3 GHz in single core performance. That's huge. It also beats the 10700K's multi-core score at 5.1 GHz. Of course, it lost to the 10900K's multi-core score, but it does have two more cores. At the end of the day, Intel's upcoming 11th gen may be able to cook an egg, but the new core does seem to give it a nice boost in performance. Of course, that isn't the only thing that gets a boost in today's last story. This time, we have a new benchmark on the upcoming mobile APU that we recently saw called the Ryzen 9 5900HX. This time though, it shows us that the CPU is an absolute monster. The benchmark was originally shared by Tom Apisak, and as you can see, it comes from Geekbench, which is where we saw the CPU the first time. The difference here is that it's clocked about 100 MHz higher, yet it got a massive uplift in score. In fact, AMD's mobile 5900HX got a better single core score than an average desktop 10900K. It even got fairly close in multi-core, yet the 5900HX has two less cores. That's definitely impressive. So far, most believe that the new HX moniker allows for overclocking like some of Intel's high-performance mobile chips. But no one is sure of that just yet. Either way, this is clearly a monster of a mobile processor and is very much beginning to blur the lines of what makes a mobile chip. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's 11th gen processors or is AMD about to start winning in the mobile space? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the link in the description below for a free 32GB microSD card and thumb drive. And as always, have a great day!